We went to the Vatican, uh, Vatican grounds in Vatican City during Easter of 2016, which happened to be a jubilee year, just out of sheer luck during Easter time. We were actually able to meet up with a Benedictine monk friend of mine, and we got to attend the outside services for Easter Mass. Unlike the ancient ruins near the Palatine Hill, you definitely need a ride to get to Vatican City, unless you're staying close, of course. However, there's a subway station right in that area. The Apostolic Palace is the official residence of the Pope, who is the head of the Catholic Church and located in Vatican City. When Italy became a unified country, the Pope refused to allow the Papal State to become part of it. Now, the problem with this was that the, the Papacy owned almost the entire center of the boot of Italy. So politically and structurally for a new country, that was a problem. But in 1929, the Lateran Treaty Pacts uh, made between the Kingdom of Italy and the Pope, settling the Roman question, uh, the treaty recognized Vatican City as an independent state under the sovereignty of the Holy See. The Italian government at the time, which was led by Benito Mussolini as prime minister, not yet dictator, agreed to give the Roman Catholic Church financial compensation for the loss of that papal territory. But it wasn't until 1947, after World War II, that the treaty was actually recognized in the Constitution of Italy. And this regulated the relations between the state and the Catholic Church. This is an area of approximately 110 acres with a permanent population of about 842. So actually it is the smallest state in the world by both area and population. And according to the terms of the treaty, the Holy See has full ownership, exclusive dominion and sovereign authority and jurisdiction over this city-state. The interior of the papal residence uh, was built over the tomb of St. Peter. And the building contains the uh, Papal uh, apartments, uh, various offices of the Catholic Church, uh, private and public chapels, the Vatican Museums, Vatican Library, and it, this is where the Sistine Chapel actually is. Uh, it, it's not at St. Peter's like a lot of people think. It's actually in this palace. Uh, there's a Raphael room and a Borgia apartment. Uh, that is Borgia as in they were Borgia popes, just like they were Medici popes. It's actually surprising to see how much of these sculptures that are in Christian residence are based on pagan mythology. The construction of the palace took place mainly between 1471 and 1605, covering about 162,000 square meters. That's 1.7 million square feet. Some of these areas are open to tourists, but some are not.
there are almost continual changes and additions and decorations for like 150 years of popes um, all the way up to the 20th century. There is way too much artwork here to try to identify everything, so it's just better to play it and just look at it. You see the opulence of this place, and then when you go and visit some monastery up on a hill or, or some place in a mountain, you think, well, wait a minute, these monks lived in caves or in places without heat or creature comforts. Uh, you can begin to see why much of the European population were so drawn to the Reformation. <laughs> 